Okay, I guess we're just gonna do this. Hey, so this is my video on um, sobriety. Are the conditions right? And uh, I'm gonna start this off by saying I've been preparing to do a series of YouTube videos for quite some time and have fallen into the trap of the paralysis of analysis. Um, it addresses my character traits of procrastination and perfectionism. Uh, like for instance, is this t-shirt the right color for this video today? Is it gonna clash? Is, should I have a darker color? Should I have a higher color? Holy crap, I could just let a thousand things keep me from, from doing this. Um, making a YouTube video, sharing my knowledge with y'all. Um, I've watched all the videos. I've wanted to buy all the equipment. I do not have a gimbal. So we're sitting at a table in my backyard. Um, do I need a thumbnail? Have I set that up right? Is it gonna look okay? Do I have too many images? How am I, I mean, holy crap. How long should the video be? Uh, recommendations are eight minutes to 12 minutes, maybe more. Um, scripted or unscripted? Uh, currently, I have a cheat sheet. Uh, normally I do bullet points, but I just wanted to get my thoughts out on paper and record this first one because there's no time like the present. And I'm gonna say that again later. Um, is everything in the correct order? I don't know. It's been a while since I put a video up on my YouTube and uh, I had imposter syndrome. I didn't think I was qualified. I didn't think I had enough information. I believed I could probably put up five or six but then I, I, you know, tap out and be done and not have anything else to say, except that every day I think of something else I could talk to you about, about sobriety. And this is what's funny is, are the conditions right is the title of this because I had to make sure everything was good and correct and I had everything in order and everything was set up before I started recording these things. And today, nothing is correct. Uh, I don't feel well. I have a call in about seven minutes with um, someone I'm supporting in recovery. My son just called while I was trying to set up the sound for this. Nothing, you know, it's never gonna be the right time. And the same goes for recovery. If, if you um, have had the question, like, I'm gonna finish this, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stop. I, I, I've gone past my limit, I'm doing it too much. Um, if it's ever crossed your mind even once that you're drinking or you're drug use or you're smoking pot, which is apparently the least of all of them, although I'm here to tell you it's not, um, if you think that this has become more than you've signed on for, or you think it's approaching or has already passed by your life being out of control, um, I get it. I remember saying, as soon as I finish this bag, I've got four beers in the fridge. As soon as I finish those beers, I'm done. You know, I've got one more bindle left of my meth um, or my Coke. And then after that, I'm, I'm done. I've just got to stop this. I just, you know what? You just got to stop. My favorite was after the holidays, because once we hit October, well, maybe Labor Day, I don't know, 4th of July, is, and we just passed Memorial Day, there's always a holiday that's gonna trip me up that says, after this holiday, I'll get sober, I'll stop smoking the weed, I'll stop doing the speed, I'll stop drinking the beers or the hard drinks or the mixed drinks or whatever. Um, I still, once again, I say there's no time like the present to make that decision. The time is now, regardless of what's going on around you. Um, that being said, these videos I'm gonna record over the course of the next year um, are gonna address the things that I've experienced or heard shared with that I identified with um, in recovery. I go to meetings in a particular recovery community. You don't have to do that. I do suggest that you have people you can talk to who are practicing sobriety. Uh, maybe have a program of recovery. I discovered when I got sober and stopped taking all the substances that I was a freaking mess. Um, I needed some help above and beyond not drinking anymore and not smoking anymore. And I went to this, this recovery group to help me figure out how they were doing it. Cause they, some of them had, had years of sobriety and they seemed to be happy. And that intrigued me because I didn't think that my life would be worth living when I got sober. And by that, I mean, I felt I would be boring and uncreative and I wouldn't know how to have fun anymore. And who goes camping or to concerts or to family events, not loaded. Uh, apparently a lot of people. 
and particularly the people that I hang out with now. Uh, so the bases we're going to cover over these videos are going to be first your mind is one of the topics, your thoughts, your anxiety, your mental state, based on my thoughts, my anxiety, my mental state on a day-to-day -day basis, um, your body, your physical, uh, are you healthy? Are you eating right to support your health and minimize your cravings? As well as, are you getting regular exercise? I am not an exerciser. It, it, it's a struggle for me to maintain my physical health. Eating is not a problem. Hydrating is not a problem. Um, not generally. But uh, getting that physical movement, yeah, I'm not great at it. I've discovered yoga and I really like to walk. You see that pool back there? <laughs> Sometimes I swim in it. Sometimes. Um, and then the last part is the soul. That inner presence. Um, I, mine I call the spiritual path. I don't want you to confuse that with religion because they're not the same. Um, the spiritual path for me is finding peace in the midst of turmoil. And to do that, I had to, I had to get a new, new set of tools. I had to learn how to do things differently in life, um, approach things differently than I have been in the past. Um, and honestly, the, the number one thing is sobriety first. Uh, because if you can't stay sober, all these other things aren't going to stick. They're not going to stay. It's going to be easier to backpedal on the agreement you made with yourself that you don't want to live like that anymore. Whatever that looks like to you. Um, some people, it's pretty hardcore. We're talking homelessness and uh, starving and lots of physical ailments. And other people, it's just mild. Um, I've been drinking wine every night for years and I don't know, it's like a bad habit, right? Like I just don't know how to stop it. I've just been doing it for so long. It's just so a part of me. Um, so, so I think those were important. Why am I qualified even to be sharing these videos with you? Well, it's not to brag, but to, to give you the fact, the fact is that I have been sober from drugs and alcohol for over 20 years. I got sober when I was 38 years old. Um, I got sober by accident. I didn't want to, but I didn't want to go to prison more. I'll tell you more about that later. And uh, eventually I decided to embrace this new way of life. But the first thing was sobriety. I had to get sober. I had to stop drinking and drugging. And then eventually, eventually I chose the program of recovery, the one that I follow. But apparently there are several, I just don't know all of them, but I do know that you don't need any of them in order to follow some basic guidelines in order to live a better life, your best recovery life. And um, I hope that you go along with me on this journey. I look forward to sharing what I have. And if you can use it, fantastic. And if you find no value, that's okay too. You can move on. But if you do find value, you know the old saying, please like, subscribe, share, and comment if you want to down below. Um, I'll put some things as we go along in the description to help you better maintain and manage your uh, sobriety and recovery. And uh, I look forward to our interaction. That's what I got today. I hope you have a beautiful day. Thanks for listening. That wasn't so hard. <sighs>